Hi there, today we're unboxing a smart Wi-Fi inline switch. This particular switch is by a company called Energy. Comes with a two year warranty and works with the Google Home and the Amazon Alexa. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So let's have a quick look around the packaging. Comes nicely packaged in a very tiny package actually. Some details there about the device. So remote switch, timing delay, energy saving, state feedback, multi-person control, a key to add, okay? Details there, so rated voltage 90 volts to 250 AC, max current 10 amps, wireless standard, which it supports is 2.4 gigahertz, okay? QR code for the apps there, so for Android and iOS. And that's it. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Like I say, very tiny, not much to it. So the actual device itself and some instructions. So user manual here, let's open that up. Wow, that's all you need to know, just literally Two pages on the, and even there, tiny as well. So nothing too complex about it. Okay, let's have a look at the actual inline switch. So in terms of size, like I've said, it is very small. Let's get my ruler, measure it. So let's measure it from this point. So just under nine centimeters, width is four, and the depth is around two and a half. So very small. Some details there. So your current comes in through here. So live, neutral coming in and going out, you're live and neutral. Okay, so let's initially open this up and see what we have under the covers here in terms of connectivity and connecting something to it. So two screws to remove on this side. Okay, so let me come in close. So two screws there and two points there. So it's just a matter of just tightening these once your cables are in there. Just to note, there's no earth connection. And let's do this side as well. Okay, so the same thing there as well. Positioning wise, a little bit odd, very much to the side I guess getting your cable in, just got to make sure it comes in quite tightly there. And then obviously clamp it in. Um, the grips at the bottom of this. So there's nothing on there, but you've got some sort of teeth there. So obviously if you keep it tight, it should keep the cable pretty secure. But the rubber you have on a cable, obviously keep it quite tight in there just to give a secure grip on there. Okay, so this is how you'd use a device like this. So an inline switch is a switch where at one end you'd get power going in and then it provides power to another device by the other end. So I'm gonna use a lamp as an example of the usage of this. So my lamp here, I'm gonna take the plug off and on the output end, I'm going to rewire it onto there. And then on the actual input end, I've got a cable here with a plug attached. I'm just going to wire that onto the input side. So pretty straightforward. And that'll allow us to show the actual inline switch in action. Okay, so let's make a start at connecting this up. So I'm going to initially take the plug off. Okay, so let's start with the input on here. So live and neutral, so live on this side, neutral on that side. So I'll take my cable and the preference would be really to keep this very short, keep it quite low. So it comes in at that sort of area. And then obviously 
the cover goes over it and it will just grip into place. But this is only a demonstration, hence why I'm doing it like this. So I've put one in, I'll just tighten that now. Okay, so that's firmly in place. Move on to the next one. There you go, it's coming close. Neutral, live, secured into place. Now we'll go on the output side. So live on this side and neutral on the other side. So let's take these. And again, I'd recommend the same thing, keeping it quite tight. So this comes in at this sort of area. So it grips in again. So let's go in for the neutral first. Okay, and then the live goes in next. So we'll just tidy the strands on the copper. Push that in. Even after you connect it, probably worth having a, a good clear look at each of the connections just to make sure there's no sort of stray copper bits of wire. So if I come in there, looks pretty clean and tidy. Okay, so that's in and that's in as well. Let's give it one final tighten. Okay, and on the output, let's put the cover on. Make sure the wire doesn't get caught anywhere. Okay, so there we have it. Both ends firmly secured now. And this is what I mean about keeping it quite tight. So if that black area was in there, it would be very nice, clean and tight finish. Okay, so let's make a start at getting this device set up. So looking at the instructions, we can go to the Play Store and look for an app called Energy Smart. So I've got my Android phone here, Play Store's just here, and I'm gonna type in Energy app. The one we're after is this one, Energy Smart. So let me click install. Give it a moment to install. Okay, so the app's installed. Let's click open. So this is what you're presented with. So next thing you wanna do is register an account if you don't already have one. Obviously agree and decide your method of logging in, either mobile number or email. So let me do that off camera. Okay, so I've logged in to my account and this is what I'm presented with. So the next thing you wanna do is power on the inline switch. So got my plug here, got an extension socket at the side. I'm gonna plug it in. Okay, it's turned on and we've got a blue light here, as you can see. So it's a steady blue light. So we need to get it into a state where it's flashing. So if we turn the plug on and off, a few times, so three times we're gonna try. It's one, it's two, and three. Okay, so there you go. It's flashing now. So that's ready to be set up. So if I go to my app, Click the plus, let's go for electrical outlet, confirm indicator rapidly blink. So it is rapidly blinking. So as soon as I hit confirm next, it's gonna ask my Wi-Fi password. So let me do that off camera. Okay, I've confirmed my Wi-Fi password. I'm just gonna turn this lamp to point downwards. Okay, looks like it's connecting in the background. And if you see the flashing, that stopped. Looks like it has made a connection and there you go, it's shot ahead and there you go, it's added it. So if I click done,
there it is. Okay, so next let me show you around the app. So obviously you've got the switch there, on and off. You've got time left, so you've got a countdown, so you can select how long you want it to remain on and then turn off, okay? And then you've got a timer. So you can actually schedule the device to turn on at intervals you prefer. So for instance, you could have it turning on every day at, if I show say one o'clock and you want it to turn on every Sunday, for instance, you can pick multiple days as well. So Tuesday as well and turn on, click save, and then you can schedule it to say for instance, turn off at two o'clock every Sunday and Tuesday, or even if you left it off, select every single day. So every day, if it has been turned on, it'll be turned off automatically just by doing this. As long as there's power going to it, there you go. Okay, it's quite straightforward in terms of functionality. If we go here, you've got the device name, got device location, check the networks, checks if it's connected to internet. Share devices, device group, so you can share the device with other people. You can group a number of devices together if you had multiple. So you could say one was for a lamp, another one for a, was for a ceiling light, uh, device info, some basic details about it. Do feedback and firmware update. Okay, that's all there is to it, very simple. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna test out, we're gonna turn off Wi-Fi. Let's let it turn off. Let's give it a moment to join my 4G mobile data. Okay, that's connected. And there you go. No ports to open on your router at all. Now, one of the things to note about devices like this is that it relies heavily on the internet. So if your internet was down, none of this functionality is gonna work. So even the timing side of it, it's not actually stored here, it's actually stored in the cloud. So part of the actual NJ app, it's saved on their servers online. So obviously if you lost internet connectivity, all this stuff you've programmed, none of it will work. But yeah, great to know that it works on your data connection away from your house. So if you had, for instance, a porch light and you linked up one of these devices onto it, then remotely you could just, if you're away from the house, just turn it off, turn it on and set times on it, which is great. Okay, so next I'm gonna show how to get Google Home working with the inline switch. So for this, I've actually had to put on the Smart Life app. So this app is very similar to the actual NJ Smart app. So if I go to the Play Store and type in Smart Life, you're presented with that, click on there, install it, and then if you open it, the interface is literally identical. So all you do is install it on there. If I go back, go to home and the next thing I'm gonna do is click over here and click home control. I'm just gonna do that off camera because it's gonna show my account details. Okay, so we're there now and this shows all our smart devices. So if I go to plus and we wanna look for smart life. There you go, if I click there now, you can use Energy's own app or you can use Smart Life, very similar. So I've had some issues getting it going with Energy's app, so I've reverted to using Smart Life to get it going with the Google Home. So all we need to do is enter our details in. So the app's exactly like Energy's app, so let me just do that off camera. Okay, and I've clicked link now and this is what I'm presented with. So we're gonna click Smart Life for this and click Link Now and then Authorize. Give it a moment, linking your Smart Life account. Okay, 
there you go, there's the device. So I can assign it to a room if I wanted to, or I could rename it. So we'll just click done and understood. Okay, so now the device is added, we can see it like this. If I click on it, I can actually give it a nickname. So let's call it study light, click OK. And now if I turn my phone off, I should be able to say, OK, Google, turn on study light. All right, turning the study light on. OK, Google, turn off study light. OK, turning the study light off. There you go. Simple as that. OK, so the next thing I'm going to show is how to get the inline switch working with the Echo Dot. So I've got my mobile phone here, Android on there, and the Amazon Alexa app is here. Let me start that up. Pretty straightforward getting it working with this. So if I go here, go to skills, and we want to enable a skill. So let's search for energy once it's appeared. Give it a moment. There you go. So NRJ. Click search. And that's the one we want to enable. Okay, so we click enable. And enter in the username and password you use for the NRJ app. So let me do that off camera. Okay, and I've clicked link on there and now I'm presented with this. I'm going to click authorize. Okay, successfully linked. So if I go back, okay, it needs to discover devices. Let's give it a moment to discover. Okay, there it is, inline switch. If we click on there, and if I show it's found it, and you can turn it on and off. And also if I go here, I can edit the name. Let's call it study light. Click OK, that's set. So if I unmute the mic now, and I say, Alexa, turn on study light. OK. Alexa, turn off study light. OK. There you go, simple as that. OK, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this inline switch. Works with both the Google Home and an Amazon Alexa. Simple to set up and configure. So there you go, details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing this. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like and subscribe.